Hi, my name is Susie and I am one of the nurses and clinical educators at St Anne's Hospice and I will be briefly talking about sleep and sharing some tips on how to improve it. This short video is one of the 50 videos created for St Anne's Hospice's 50th birthday. A good night's rest is essential to a healthy lifestyle, protecting you physically and mentally, as well as boosting your quality of life. Sleep deprivation can have a serious impact on our emotional, physical and mental health. Do you struggle to fall asleep? Do you feel tired? Having a sleep issue is surprisingly common. At any given time, up to 40% of adults have difficulties with their sleep. Yet in a recent survey, almost 60% of adults felt that there was a lack of support for sleep issues. Changes in hormone levels as we age can cause sleep disturbances. And then sleep disturbances can alter our hormone levels turning it into a vicious cycle. Menopause-related insomnia can stretch on for weeks and months if not properly treated. So see your GP for advice and support if you are ex experiencing menopause-related insomnia. As we get older, we experience a change in our sleeping patterns, waking up more in the night and having earlier bedtimes and waking up earlier. Shift work, which can take the form of night shifts, rotating shifts, split shifts, or even overtime and being on call, could all have some sleep disruption and deprivation as primary factors resulting from shift work. Whatever the cause, sleep problems can leave people feeling isolated and lonely. So here are some simple lifestyle changes can, which can make a world of difference to your quality of sleep. Try following these simple tips. These are sometimes referred to as sleep hygiene, which is basically healthy sleep habits. So number one, have a consistent wake up time. That's even at the weekend too. So keep regular hours. Keep going to bed and getting up at roughly the same time. All the time, this will help program your body to sleep better. Number two, create a restful sleeping environment. Your bedroom should be kept for rest and sleep, and it should be neither too hot nor too cold and as quiet and as dark as possible. Create a bedroom routine that's relaxing usually in about an hour before sleep. So have decaffeinated tea or a warm bath, dim the lights and put away electronic devices. Don't watch TV, eat or talk on the phone or even use your computer while in bed. Make a clear distinction between daytime activities associated with alertness and bedtime ones associated with relaxation. Number three, make sure your bed is comfortable. Also remember getting comfortable pillows and bedding is important too. It's difficult to get deep restful sleep on a mattress that's too soft, too hard, too small, or even too old. Number four, take more exercise. Regular, moderate exercise such as swimming or walking can help relieve the day's stresses and strains, but not too close to bedtime or it may keep you awake. Number five, cut down on stimulants such as caffeine in tea and coffee, especially in the evening. They interfere with falling asleep and prevent deep sleep. Um, have a hot milky drink or herbal tea instead. The half-life of caffeine is five hours, which means that five hours after having a drink, say like tea or coffee, 50% of caffeine is still left in your body. 
it takes another five hours for the caffeine to be reduced in half again to 25% and so on. So by 10 p.m., 25% of caffeine from your 12 o'clock coffee will still be in your body. Number six, don't overindulge. Too much food or alcohol, especially late at night, just before bed, bedtime can play havoc with sleep patterns. Alcohol may help you fall asleep initially, but will in interrupt your sleep later in the night. Even one unit of alcohol interferes with sleep quality and makes sleep less restorative. Number seven, don't smoke. Yes, it's bad for sleep too. Smokers take longer to fall asleep, wake up more often and often experience more disruption. Number eight, try to relax before going to bed. Switch off screens an hour before bedtime and instead have a warm bath, listen to some quiet music or do some yoga. All are helpful to relax your both mind and body. Number nine, deal with your worries. Deal with worries or a heavy workload by making lists of things to be tackled the next day. Writing down your worries will help you switch off at night. And lastly, number 10, if you can't sleep, don't lie there worrying about it. Get up and do something you find relaxing until you feel sleepy again and then go back to bed. We want to thank the Sleep Council for all the information in this video. You can find the practical tips on the Practical Sleep Tips for Adults advice sheet on their website. The Sleep Charity incorporating the Sleep Council provide advice and support to empower the nation to sleep better. Then they campaign to improve sleep support and access to high quality information, raise awareness of the value of a good night's sleep and promote understanding around the complexities of sleep. Who do I talk to if I can't sleep? They provide a national sleep helpline um, which can help with your sleep problems. Their helpline is run by a team of specialist trained sleep advisors. Although they can not give you medical advice, they can talk through your issues, offer you some practical strategies and recommend services that could help. Sleep education is empowering and you can understand why you may not be sleeping well and change that. They can promise to listen to you without judgment and help you decide what next steps are right for you. If you like to talk about your sleep, you can call them between 7 and 9, Sunday to Thursday on the number on your screen. Or you can visit their website www.thesleepcharity.org.uk. Many thanks for listening and I hope this information will help you get a better night's sleep. Goodbye.